to the January 26, 2022 meeting of Local Agency Formation Commission. No, I can't hear Barbara. I can't Barbara, Barbara, I can't microphone. hear Barbara. Gone out. Barbara, it, are you muted? Yeah, Tom, we can't hear her either. So it's not just you. You're on, Blair. Oh, we hear you. I heard that. Did he hear? Yeah. Oh, Blair, you're muted. Barbara, repeat? All right. Okay. Um, as we start this, I want to welcome everyone to the new year at Kern LAFCO. We welcome Commissioner Fowler to our first meeting, running the show as the chair. Uh, after several months of in-person meetings, we're back to holding our meetings by teleconference. Let me provide a refresher on a couple of items. Uh, everyone starts out being muted. Uh, I ask everyone to, to try to stay muted unless you are talking to cut down on the background noise and the you know echo that we, we're getting right now. Um, staff and commissioners can unmute themselves. The easiest way to unmute is usually to hold down your space bar while talking. When making a motion, please state your name and motion you are making. For, for those who are an agency or the public, your microphone is muted until the chair recognizes you and the host unmutes your microphone. There will be an opportunity to speak on specific items on the agenda during public comments. Please use the raise hand function on Zoom to be recognized. The raise hand button is in different places depending on your version and the devices you are using to participate. You can also submit comments electronically by email to clerk at kernlafco.org. That's clerk at kernlafco, uh, one word, dot org. Mr. Rice is host. Uh, he's in charge of this Zoom meeting. If, if anyone gets unruly, Mr. Rice has the authority to kick them out. Or if anyone needs to recuse himself, Mr. Rice can place them in the waiting room and bring them back out again when the agenda item is completed. The biggest change to how we, the meetings are run is that all votes will be done by roll call, uh, voice, voice votes. Commissioners, please make sure you are unmuted as we are recording and need to hear your response. By LAFCO standards, we have a complicated and long agenda tonight, and we've had changes all, all up until uh, this last hour. So um, please work with us as we, uh, Try to make sure this uh, runs smoothly as possible. With that, I hand it back to the chair to start the meeting. Thank you, Mr. Knox. May we have the roll call, Madam Clerk? Becky, are you there? Commissioner Couch? Here. Commissioner Crump? Here. Commissioner Fowler? Here. Commissioner McKibben? Here. Commissioner Morris? Here. Commissioner Parlier? Commissioner Sanders? Commissioner Sanders? Commissioner Scrivener? Here. So for Commissioner Sanders, since I can see that she's on there, can I mark her as present? Tom? Tom, you're muted if you're trying to talk. Yeah, you can you can count her presence, but we're going to need to have her eventually be able to communicate with us. I did prompt her to unmute, um, but she hasn't. I believe it's star six on a phone to unmute a phone. Hmm. Here we go. I am unmuted. I'm on the call. Okay, I'm going to mark you as here. Thank you, Karen. Thank you. Welcome, Karen. 
Now, how do I mute myself since I can't use my keypad? I can do it for you if you want. Let's go on to our next item. Have, have we finished the roll? Did you call for No, you have not. This is Commissioner Zaragoza. Zaragoza, thank you. Commissioner Zaragoza is here. Did you hear that? Thank you, I've got that now, thank you. Well, Gary and Lou. You're welcome. All right, let's have the uh, Pledge of Allegiance. Uh, Commissioner Torres, would you mind leading us, please? Ready? Salute. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Uh, item three on our agenda is teleconference meeting requirements. And I'm to read this to you. Discussion and possible minute action. Meeting protocol. A motion to hold the board meeting by teleconference pursuant to Assembly Bill 361 and Government Code Section 54953E and finding that there is a proclaimed state of emergency in the state and that state and local official have recommended measures to promote social distancing, all as required by AB 361 and Section 54953E. And that's a motion, Mr. Madam Chairman, to be made. Okay, we need to, to hear from our executive officer first, I believe. You have a report on that, um, Mr. Knox? I do, thank you. Uh, Chair Fowler uh, made the decision to schedule this meeting by teleconference, but the chair does not have the final say. Beginning January 1st, the passage of AB 361 requires that funding, finding of a state of emergency and local official recommendation of social distancing is necessary to hold a meeting by teleconference. The commission must approve these findings in order for the meeting, move, meeting to move forward. In other words, unless the commission approves, this meeting is over. So it's my recommendation to approve findings of a state of emergency and local officials have recommended measures to promote social distancing. Are there any members of the public who would like to comment on this? There are no hands raised at this time. Okay. Are there any comments from members of the commission? This is Commissioner Scribner. I'll move approval. Do I hear a second? Second. This is Commissioner Sanders, I second. We were lucky enough to get two seconds. We have the motion by Commissioner Scrivener, and I think uh, Commissioner Couch rang in first. Um, could we have the roll call for the vote? Madam Clerk? Commissioner Couch? Yes. Commissioner Crump? Yes. Commissioner Fowler? Yes. Commissioner McKibben? Yes. Commissioner Morris? Yes. Commissioner Sander? Yes. Commissioner Scrivener? Yes. Commissioner Zaragoza? Yes. All ayes, motion passed. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Uh, on to our next agenda page, approval of the minutes uh, of the December 1st meeting. I need a vote. Uh, are there any comments or corrections from the commission? Hearing none. All those, oh, I guess I need a motion uh, to approve the minutes. This is Commissioner Moore's motion to approve. Thank you. I hear, need a second. Commissioner Sanders to second. Okay, Commissioner Morris motion, Commissioner Sanders to second. All those in favor? Well, can we have the roll call, Madam Clerk? Commissioner Couch? Yes. Commissioner Crump? Yes. Commissioner Fowler? Yes. Commissioner McKibben? Yes. Commissioner Morris? Yes. Commissioner Sanders? Yes. Commissioner Scrivener? Yes. Commissioner Zaragoza? Yes. All aye, motion passes. Thank you.
We can't hear you, Barbara. Address for the record before making your presentation. Are there any public members who would like to speak? Hearing none, we'll go on to item six. Uh, no Barbara, sorry, we just had a Beth Cooney raise her hand. Oh, all right. Uh, I'm sorry. Unmute her really quick. Um, Beth Cooney, you should be allowed to come now. If I can yes. you hear me now? All right. Commissioner Fowler, I could not hear what you were saying, so I wasn't sure if you were asking for general uh, public um, interest in speaking or not. I was. Um, welcome. Then I've raised my hand. Thank you. You're welcome. Could I have your name and your address, please? And you have about two minutes, but we'll be generous. Uh, well, this is in response to one of the items coming up. I, I'm not sure if this is the appropriate time or not. I, I missed what you were saying, so I apologize. Oh, uh, I believe we need to wait and have you speak during when that item is called. Right. Okay. So we'll put you on hold and welcome you back at the proper time. Thank you. You're welcome. Are there any other members of the public who would like to speak? Not at this time. All right. Well, let's go ahead to our notice public hearings then. Uh, item 6A, it, um, number 1788, City of McFarland. Um, this is City of McFarland annexation number 18. The proposal is to annex approximately 2,138 acres of land generally located west of 99, Hanawalt Road going south to Whistler Road, Garzoli Road going east to 99 Freeway. The lands east of 99 Freeway, Sherwood Avenue going south to Worcester Road, and 99 Freeway going east to Driver Road. The annexation was initiated by the city for the purpose of future development. The surrounding properties are ag land, including two dairies and numerous agricultural ponds and scattered rural residences. This proposal does not have 100% landowner consent. The applicant has been informed that notice, hearing, and protest hearing will not be waived. Madam Chair, this is uh, Attorney Schroeder. Yes. I'm, I'm gonna recuse myself on this matter. I, as city attorney from McFarland a few months ago, I, I did some preliminary work on this. I'm no longer the city attorney, but I think I need to recuse myself. And so I'd like to go into a waiting room. Thank you. Can you let me know when he's in the waiting room, Madam Clerk or Bud? Billy, can you go ahead and put the um, Yeah, I will do that. Okay, he's in the waiting room. All right, great. Uh, our first action is a request from McFarland Rec and Park District to continue the item. Um, Blair, could we have your executive officer report? Thank you. Um, before moving on to my report recommendation on the annexation proceeding, the Mc McFarland Rec and Park District has requested a continuance of this item until such time as they can resolve issues they have with the city over impact fees. My latest intel is that the district and city talked today and they have both agreed to support a continuance, but I will let them provide that update. With the chair's approval, I've asked General Manager Jeff Nickel and, and possibly is the district's legal counsel, Beth Cooney, to briefly describe the issues and the current status. If the city would like to respond, it would be appropriate for them to speak as well. Uh, Mr. Nickel, please introduce yourself and proceed with uh, your comments. You need to unmute Mr. Nickel. I have done so. And then after, um, well, we have a raised hand, so we'll get to that. Thank you very much, Mr. Knox and, um, and commissioners. Uh, my name is Jeff Nickel. I'm the district manager for McFarland Recreation and Park District. And, and I'm here today um, not um, against um, annexation. Um, but what we want to do is make sure that um, we get to the negotiation table 
um, on Park and Taxi. And today I, um, I'm happy to report that I spoke with um, Keith Williams, um, who's also the city manager, and we agreed to a continuance so we can sit down um, to work on this matter and, and work to resolve it. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Nichol. We have another speaker. Is Beth Cooney um, going to speak to this? I, I have nothing to add to that. I'm just here um, in the event anything else comes up. But no, what, what Mr. Nickel reported is is uh, accurate and, and as far as I'm concerned, good news. Thank you very much. Do we have any other speakers who would like to speak to this point? I think the city manager is available. Mr. Williams. Okay, uh, Kenny Williams, go ahead. Yes, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Hi, good afternoon. I, I believe the, uh, the city mayor is uh, Sally Hoyo is here to speak on the matter. Uh, first, uh, I thank you though, and yes, uh, just to uh, uh, coincide with Jeff, yeah, we're, we've been in talks and are, are continue to talk and we'll do so further, but I believe the city manager would like to just kind of say a few words as well. Thank you. Uh, Sally Gomez. Hi, yes. Good afternoon. Good evening. Sally Tapoya, Mayor of McFarland. And yes, I I did speak with City Manager Kenny Williams. And yes, we are in agreement with uh, Jeff Nichols, Parks and Recs, to uh, an agreement with the postponement until we come to a, an agreement. Very good. Thank you. Do we have any other public comments on this? Not at this time. All right. Uh, are there any comments or questions by the commissioners? I'm ready to hear a motion to um, on 1788 to continue that item. Maybe I can simplify this and with my recommendation and they can approve my recommendation. Okay. okay. Um, Mr. Couch, I was going to let I was going to let Blair make his recommendation. Is it yes. a date specific? Is it a time specific? What, what do we need, Blair? Yeah. Um, is my recommendation since both sides agree that we recommend the commission continue this item until February twenty third meeting? So moved. Thank you. Motion from Commissioner Couch. Do we hear a second? Second, McKibben. Thank you. Mr. McKibben is the second. Uh, Madam Clerk, could we hear the roll? Commissioner Couch? Yes. Commissioner Crump? Yes. Commissioner Fowler? Yes. Commissioner McKibben? Yes. Commissioner Morris? Yes. Commissioner Sanders? Yes. Commissioner Scrivener? Yes. Commissioner Zaragoza? Yes. All yeses, motion passes. Thank you. And then action point two on our agenda would be moot at this point. So we'll go on to our, our next item, which is um, B, uh, 795 County Service Area CSA 17. Just a second, let me let Tom back in. Okay. Okay, he's back. You can continue, Barbara. All right, thank you. This is CSA 17, annexation number 15. This proposal is to annex approximately 41.81 acres of land generally located on Breckenridge Road, east of Morning Drive in East Bakersfield, Orangewood area. This annexation was initiated by the county for the purpose of meeting service requirements of the subdivision as approved by the county. The surrounding properties are west, vacant commercial, north, developed residential, east, developed residential, south, railroad. This proposal does not have 100% land over loaner consent. The applicant has been informed that notice hearing and protest hearing will not be waived. Um, Mr. Knox, could we have your report? 
Thank you. Uh, this annexation is pretty straightforward. It's a residential development in the Metro Bakersfield area approved by the county with conditions that a CS8 annexation is approved to provide services to the subdivision. Those services are drainage, landscaping, wall maintenance, and street sweeping. Mr. Rice, can you please uh, put the exhibit map up on the screen for everyone? Uh, this annexation uh, into the CSA does not change any zoning. It is consistent with the general plan and reg regional transportation plan. There is no ag land conversion. It will not increase water usage. It is consistent with commission policies. Uh, it, it conforms to the assessor uh, parcel boundaries. We have an indemnification agreement from the county for, uh, that um, manages these CSAs, and there's no functional overlap. CEQA is handled by a notice of exemption uh, adopted by the applicant, and CSAs are funded by fees collected based on uh, the cost of the service provided. The, ha the applicant has not garnered 100% consent. The county has been notified that notice hearing and protest hearing will not be waived. The protest hearing would not have been necessary unless the annexation came before the property was subdivided. Uh, in the plan for providing services, it lists the county as providing water for this area. Uh, Mr. Louise, the general manager for East Niles CSC, politely corrected us and informed that East Niles provides water to that area. My apologies, but I must get on my soapbox for a moment. The issue is timing. The subdivision has already been significantly built out when we first heard about this condition of approval. Why would county planning approve a condition without first consulting the agency that must approve the annexation for the condition to be met? LAFCO never received any notification before it went to the planning commission for approval nor after. Both Bud and I have asked several times for this information. Every once in a while, we receive notice on upcoming projects, but they're mostly for solar projects, which we have no interest in. I would consider recommending a no vote in order to get someone's attention in public works and planning. But at the end of the day, the greater responsibility is the homeowner, is to the homeowners who should be receiving these services that they were promised. I understand that LAFCO is a very small part of the planning and delivery of services, but I refuse to allow for the role of this commission to be diminished. If that ruffles a few uh, people, so be it. After this item is complete, I will use it as, as, as an example of our issues in order to highlight the problems and the lack of a notification this, this causes. Now I'm going to get back to the annexation itself. I didn't, felt like I needed to say that. Effective and overlapping agencies and districts were notified. Information was provided, was included uh, in the report and recommendation. The process required by the Cortese Knox Hertzberg Act has been followed, including notices to affected agencies and any notices and publications required by law. It is my recommendation that the commission review, consider the environmental doc document adopted by the applicant. It is further recommended that the commission approve annexation number 15 to C County Service Area 17, subject to notice, hearing and protest hearing and conditions recommended by the executive officer. Thank you, Mr. Knox. Are there any members of the public who would like to speak on this item? There are not. Hearing none, are there any commissioners who wish to speak on this item with comments or questions? Mr. Zaragoza has his hand raised. Go ahead. Uh, if you can hear me, I just want to confirm that our attorney is also activated. He's no longer in the reading room, is that correct? Hello. Uh, Mr. Schroeder, are you with us? Tom's not in the waiting room from what I can tell. Tom, did you want to say hi? Was there a question there? Because I didn't hear it if there was. I just want to make sure you're not in the waiting room, Tom. That's all. <laughs> no, I'm not. Uh, regarding the uh, the CSA, uh, I, I do agree with uh, 
our executive director officer that uh, perhaps um, if it's not uh, out of the ordinary, perhaps he could schedule to, to meet at the next uh, or the next follow up uh, county supervisor board meeting just to kind of update the board uh, on some of the responsibilities regarding CSA changes, annexation, boundary changes, and maybe just give him a little bit of an update on the uh, Cortese Knox Hirschberg Act responsibilities that have been provided to LAFCO. It'd be kind of nice to see him at the at the next meeting or some follow-up meeting and it could be brief. And uh, just to kind of remind them, I'm sure uh, even though our two uh, prestigious board members here are very familiar with that, it would be nice if the whole board and maybe some of the staff, such as planning staff could hear it again. It's just a suggestion and recommendation. If you want to discuss it at a later date, fine. But I just want to, I want to say I support Blair, Mr. Blair's uh, noxious uh, uh, concern. That's all. Thank you, Commissioner Zaragoza. Are there any other comments by other commissioners? I have a quick question then. Um, Mr. Knox, is it a courtesy to let us in on this process or is it a legal requirement? I believe that they are required to notify us, yes. Because we, we have made the request that we are notified. Any any public interest that requests that should receive notification. It, it's, my, it's my intention to take this back to public works and the planning department and use it as an example of, you know, why it's important that we get notified early in the process. Uh, we may not have a, an issue at all, but we don't know that until we actually see what the what the project is. Mm -hmm. And there may be other options other than going to a CSA that are, are more, more appropriate. Mm -hmm. Are there other comments by commissioners on this item? Well, I'll um, entertain a motion. Anybody, anybody? I move that we... Proceed as uh, Blair recommends. Right, Commissioner Sanders is the mo making the motion. Do I have a second? The motion will die without a second. Do I hear a second? Everybody's on mute. Mr. Schroeder, would you advise? No, it dies with the lack of a second. Okay, final call. Do I hear a second on this motion by Commissioner Sanders? Can, can I ask Blair to give us his recommend, a synopsis of his, quickly of his, of his recommendation? Thank you, go ahead, Mr. Knox. It is my recommendation that the commission review and consider the environmental document adopted by the applicant it is further recommended that the commission approve annexation number 15 to county service area 17 subject to notice hearing and protest hearing and conditions recommended by the executive officer i'm recommending approval just for clarification commissioner sanders your motion was to approve the recommendation of the executive officer was it not yes that was my intention of the motion okay do i hear a second i second Thank you. That was Commissioner Couch. Barbara, sorry, uh, we couldn't hear you for a second. I think you probably asked the I, clerk for a roll call. Hey, uh, sorry guys, this is Zach. Um, Madam Chair, I'm trying to read between the lines a little bit here and, and track and there's been some technical, um, technical issues where some of the audio is has uh, laughed a little bit, but do you think it would be appropriate? Um, I'm going to ask Mr. Knox. It sounds to me like you may have some issue with county planning and county public works. Do we need to set up an ad hoc committee with the chair and uh, Couch and I to discuss this with you? I believe Not I can be disappointed, but I'm kind of wondering if you do we have a you know some issue on the on the table here? 
I believe it would be appropriate for me to schedule a meeting with him first and sit down with them staff to staff. And if that doesn't uh, provide enough clear, clear, clarity, then we can revisit um, putting together a committee. Okay. Um, uh, Commissioner Couch, like, do you have any thoughts on that? I just, I wanna make sure we don't, you know, have something that is festering here that we need to deal with. I, I understand and I'm happy to do that. I was just, frankly, I was just seconding this motion, but I was gonna call Blair and say, what's really going on here that we need to get to the bottom of? So I'd be happy to do that with you, Zach. All right. And okay, Blair, well, let's, uh, let's let staff try to work it out on their level. And then if we need to elevate it up to, you know, the commissioners, then I'd say we keep that as an option. Okay, good idea. Okay, okay. all right, thank you. I just. Uh, just all I was looking for was some clarity. Thank you. I try not to elevate us to the supervisor level until absolutely necessary. You have is enough there, on your plate. Is there further discussion? Madam Clerk, could we have the roll call? Yes. Commissioner Couch? Yes. Commissioner Crump? Yes. Commissioner Fowler? Yes. Commissioner McKinnon? Yes. Commissioner Morris? Yes. Commissioner Sanders? Yes. Commissioner Scribner? Yes. Commissioner Zaragoza? Yes. All yes, motion passes. Thank you. Item seven, determination proceedings. A, 1790, North of the River Sanitation District. Uh, this is annexation number one, one two. This proposal is to annex two parcels of approximately 6.42 acres of land located, parcel A, west of Creek Road and north of 7th Standard, parcel B, north of Renfro Road and west of Jason Road. This annexation was initiated by the property owners for the purpose of gaining sewer services. The surrounding properties are parcel A, surrounded by industrial uses and for parcels B, surrounded by a state residential. The proposal has 100% landowner consent. The applicant has requested that notice hearing and protest hearing be waived. Um, Mr. Knox, could we hear your executive officer report? As noted, this annexation is for the purpose of getting sewer service. There are two parcels. Since the report and recommendation was completed and sent out, North of River Sanitation District has requested that parcel B be removed from this annexation. The county has decided that they will provide sewer to parcel B, making the annexation to the North of the River Sanitation uh, unnecessary. Uh, Mr. Good, Mr. Rice put up the map so you can see both parcel A and parcel B. Uh, because there are these are separate parcels, there will not be an issue with redrawing a map and legal description. This is consistent with the general plan, regional transportation plans and specific plans. There is no ag land conversion, is con consistent with commission policies and conforms to assessor parcels. We have an identification agreement from North of the River. Uh, this pr uh, proposed annexation overlaps with CSA 71. The CSA provides multiple services, including street lights and street sweeping that will continue to be provided by the CSA. As such, only the sewer planning will be removed. The legal term for this is a di divestiture. From the, uh, the sewer planning will be removed uh, from the services provided by the CSA in the affected area. This is uh, CEQA is handled by notice of exemption adopted by the applicant. Uh, services are provided on a cost fee basis. The applicant has garnered 100% consent and the district the uh, CSA has requested that notice hearing, sorry, the district has requested that notice hearing and protest hearing be waived. Effective and overlapping agencies and districts were notified. Information provided was included in the report and recommendation. The process required by the Cortese and Knox Hertzberg Act has been followed, including notices to affected agencies and any notices re, uh, and publications required by law. It is recommended that the commission review and consider the environmental doc document adopted by the applicant. 
It's further recommended that the commission approve annexation number uh, 112 to North River Sanitary District for parcel A, remove parcel B with a divestiture of the sewer planning service from GSA 71, waiving notice, hearing, and protest hearing, and subject to conditions recommended by the executive officer. Thank you, Mr. Knox. Is there public comment on this item? I do not see anybody. Right, are there questions or comments from commissioners? Doesn't look like it. No, um, I'll hear, listen for a motion of approval for the recommendation of the executive officer. I make a motion to uh, accept the uh, executive officer's re recommendation, Mr. Kevin. Mr. Kevin, motion. Mr. Couch, second. Uh, is there further discussion or any discussion? All right, Madam Clerk, will you read the roll? Mr. Couch? Yes. Mr. Crump? Yes. Mr. Fowler? Yes. Mr. McKibben? Yes. Commissioner Morris? Yes. Commissioner Sanders? Yes. Commissioner Scribner? Yes. Commissioner Zaragoza? Yes. All yeses, motion passes. Thank you. We're still under determination proceeding B, 1793 Lost Hills Utility District, uh, annexation number 20. The proposal is to annex approximately 12.05 acres of land on the east side of Lambertson Drive, north of Highway 46. This annexation was initiated by the property owners for the purpose of gaining potable water and sewer services for the future development of the former county airport facility property. The surrounding properties are agricultural, residential, county park, and open ground. This proposal has 100% landowner consent. The applicant has requested that notice, hearing, and protest hearing be waived. Could we have your report, um, Mr. Madam, Knox? Madam Chair, uh, this is Attorney Schroeder again. Yes. Uh, I'm, I'm the attorney for this district and the applicant, so I'm gonna recuse myself going to the waiting room. Madam Clerk, would you let us know when he's exited? He is in the waiting room. All right. Go ahead, uh, Mr. Knox. Earlier this week, I received word from both the landowner and the Lost Hills Utilities District that they have re requested a continuance. There's a pattern here this, this month. Uh, a continuous, uh, continua continuation of this item until the March 2022 commission meeting. The final finalization of the water supply agreement and the timing of the connection fee condition on this annexation will require additional time. The district has, has indicated that they are not opposed to this continuation request. With that, I recommendation a continuance of this item until the March 2022 commission meeting. Thank you. Are there any members of the public who would care to comment on this item? I do not see any hands raised. Any comments from commissioners? I'll move Blair's recommendation. Thank you. That's Commissioner Couch for a motion. Do I hear a second? Commissioner Morris, second. Commissioner Morris, thank you. Any further discussion? I'm sorry, I couldn't make out what that comment was, unless it was accidental. Um, Madam Clerk, could we hear the roll? Commissioner Couch? Commissioner Couch? I'm, I, I'm sorry, yes. Commissioner Crump? Yes. Commissioner Fowler? Yes. Commissioner McKibben? Yes. Commissioner Morris? Yes. Commissioner Sanders? Yes. Commissioner Scribner? Yes. Commissioner Zaragoza? Yes. All yeses, motion passes. Thank you. 
So action two on that item is now moot. So we can. We're going to go on to item C, 1796 County Service Area CSA 60. Um, I've now been um, added back. Oh, he's back. Great. Welcome back. This proposal is to annex approximately 137.36 acres of land generally located on the north side of Merle Haggard Drive, east of Airport Drive. This annexation was initiated by the county for the purpose of street sweeping and drainage facility maintenance services. The surrounding properties are mostly vacant industrial land with only one developed parcel. The proposal has 100% landowner consent and the applicant has uh, requested that notice hearing and protest hearing be waived. Could we hear your report, uh, Mr. Knox? Thank you. Um, for Mr. Um, Soder's benefit, we continue the, the item for Frost Hills Utility, Utilities District. So he's aware of that. Okay. Uh, as far as CSA 60, the annexation is across the street from the county airport and takes in what's known as the Amazon Warehouse. The CSA will provide street lights and extension of zones of benefit one and two for street sweeping and drainage. Uh, facility maintenance, respectively. And there's a map of it up on, on the screen for you. This is zoned medium industrial. It's consistent with the general plan, regional transportation plan, or specific plans. There's no ag land conversion. It's consistent with commission policies. The boundaries of the proposed annexation conform to the assessor parcel and tax area. We have an identification agreement from the county and there's no functional overlap. The notice of exemption was adopted by the applicant and services are provided on a cost fee basis. Uh, not to belabor the point from earlier, but like the previous uh, CSA annexation, LAFCO was not notified until after approval and after build out of the warehouse. Um, effective and overlapping agencies and districts were notified. Information uh, provided was included in this report and recommendation. The process required by the Cortese Knox Hertzberg Act has been followed, including notices to affected agencies and any notices and publications required by law. It is recommended that the commission review and consider the environmental document adopted by the applicant. It's further recommended that the commission approve annexation number 11, the county service area 60. We have noticed hearing and protest hearing with condition recommended by the executive officer. Thank you. Are there any members of the public who would like to speak to this item? We do not have any members of the public on anymore. Okay. Uh, does any commissioner have a comment or a question on this item? Then I'm open to hear a motion. Commissioner Morris, move to approve. Thank you, Commissioner, Commissioner Morris. Zaragoza, second. Thank you, Commissioner Zaragoza. We have a motion and a second. Madam Clerk, would you call the roll? Commissioner Couch? Yes. Commissioner Crum? Commissioner Crum? <laughs> Commissioner, Commissioner Fowler? Yes. Commissioner McKibben? Yes. Commissioner Morris? Yes. Commissioner Sanders? Yes. Commissioner Scrivener? Yes. Commissioner Zaragoza? Yes. Commissioner Crump? Commissioner Crump, are you muted? Can I move forward with this? I said yes. Okay. Thank Great. You. All yeses, motion passed. Thank you. Let's go on to item eight, commission items. There are no agendized commission items. Do, does any commissioner have an item they would like to bring forward? Then I would. Oh, I'm sorry, Commissioner Zaragoza, go ahead. We can't put anything on the agenda that's not there. 
So if, if Commissioner Zaragoza has something just to comment, that's fine. But you can't discuss it. There's not going to be a discussion about it. Got it. Commissioner Zaragoza, do you have a comment yeah. to make? Well, it's a question comment. <laughs> uh, per the uh, LAFCO uh, Commissioner Handbook, um, I believe there are uh, currently two standing committees, uh, a budget committee and a policy committee. And the question is, um, are they currently active? And if so, who are the members? That's all. There can be a response to that if you want to do that, right, Blair. Okay. Uh, there are two committees. Um, we do have members, but those members have changed. And actually, I need to get with Chair Fowler and decide if uh, there are any changes to each of those committees. It's at her discretion who sits on which committee. I don't have the names of who's on each committee right in front of me at the moment, um, but I can I can send that out to the to the commissioners and let you know who that is. I'd appreciate that. And I'm assuming by your question, Commissioner Zaragoza, that you're interested in serving on a committee. I think you and I have talked about that. Sure, I'd be glad to, thanks. Great. So, um, uh, Mr. Knox, we can expect something in an email from you about the members of the committee and uh, before our next meeting where we might have a discussion of that. I'm writing a note to myself as we speak. Great. Are there any other commission items? Then I'll go ahead with mine. Um, apparently, it's within my purview to decide whether we continue to meet by Zoom or meet in person. But I would like to poll you and find out how you feel about that. So I'm interested in your thoughts. Don't all speak at once, though. Is that specifically for the February meeting? that you're referring to? Yes, just for the next meeting. I think we may need to do this one by one, depending on what uh, the state is of the pandemic. Would you like to ring in uh, Mrs. Sanders? Yes, I, I'm in favor of having the Zoom meeting. Okay. Um, given the nature of the um, pandemic and all of the things that are surrounding it, I just think the Zoom meetings are just as effective as meeting in person. All right. How about you, Commissioner Morris? I'll I'll be fine with that. Um, I'll you know I'll, I can go somewhere and, and listen to it. It's just that my internet is not stable, and mm -hmm. it's because it's hooked up very close to my alarm system, and so it oh. it gets me in and out of the meeting. So, and but only goes away for like fifteen seconds, and then it comes back on again. But. Mm -hmm. But like I said, I can always go somewhere and, um, and you know, uh, take in the meeting, so. Good oh, thank you. What about uh, Commissioner Couch? I'm happy to do it either way. Uh, I don't mind meeting in person. I like, I like that, but if you all feel more comfortable Zoom, I'm okay with that too, whatever you prefer. Okay. Uh, how about Commissioner Crump? I'm the same as Commissioner Couch, either way. You guys are Switzerland, huh? Okay, uh, how about Commissioner McKibben? I'm with uh, Commissioner Couch. Um, I would prefer the in-person in, uh, uh, in meeting, but I, I go either way. Um, uh, yeah, so, but I would, uh, the in-person meeting I'd prefer. Okay. And uh, Commissioner Garizota, I'm sorry, I killed your name there. Uh, I can go either way, uh, Barbara. Okay. Either way. Well, it, it kind of, I mean, I prefer in person. Um, and if, I know we have two commissioners who come from a distance. So I understand that uh, travel might be a problem for them. Um, is that a decision we need to make tonight, um, Mr. Knox? Can't do that tonight, Madam Chairman. You can't have a vote on that. Tonight. No. Okay. Well, I'll take your uh, comments under advisement then, and then do I just make a decision and, and let them know before the next meeting, or how does that work? It will be on the next agenda. Okay. 
Well, then are we stuck with Zoom then because we won't be able to vote on it before then? No. If okay. you decide to go back in person, we will put, you know, back in person on the agenda and move forward. All right. Thank you. Anybody else with a comment? Any other commissioner with an issue? Okay. We're going to go to general business uh, point nine on our agenda. Can I ask a question? Chairman? Sure. Chairman? <clears throat> but on this subject, is it one way or the other? We're all in person or we're doing Zoom, there is no hybrid that can accommodate the members that want to do it that way? Great question. Let me try to answer that. Um, I've had a conversation with both Kathy Krause and the folks that run the back end of the, um, um, the board chambers uh, that, that videotape our stuff while we're there. And it's, when I last talked to them, they didn't really have a good capability of doing both at the same time. Mm. Um, so it was going to be pretty complicated to try to set that up. Um, that's why I have not tried to do a a, um, a hybrid kind of approach where we do in person and online both. If that capability has changed over the last six, seven months, um, I'm happy to revisit that and come back with another suggestion. Can we talk about this, please? Sure. Yeah, right. Blair, this is Zach. Um, we've done a hybrid with Kerncog for a couple of years now, where some members have been in person in the room and some have been not in person, but maybe that's an issue just with our board chambers. I think you know, respectfully, Madam Chair, that moving forward with virtual for February, maybe that's a safe bet, you know, but I, I feel, you know, based on data that probably we're all kind of tracking that this last surge is just about over. So maybe, we, you know, we say, okay, February, we do virtual and then, you know, probably by March, we're good to go. But those are, you know, just completely, I know, in your um in your purview to decide but those are my thoughts since you didn't ask me <laughs> <laughs> hadn't gotten yeah. there yet that's right <laughs> did i leave anybody else out or anybody want to change their vote <laughs> okay well uh thank you for your comments and we'll i'll be talking to blair and uh looking into this hybrid possibility before any decision is made so thank you for that suggestion commissioner couch so, Chair Fowler, it sounds like there may be a possibility of doing a hybrid that if it's not available at the Board of Supervisors Chambers, it might be available at, at Kerncog. We could, hope, we could ask them if we can, we can use their facilities to host the meeting. Oh. So that may be a different option. All right. Well, oh. I will, I will look into that. Okay. And we'll talk then. Thank you. All right. Let's go on to general business. Uh, number nine, A, approval of monthly expense list 21-11. You've all received the expense list in your packet. Are there any comments or questions about it? I move approval. Couch. Do I hear a second? I'll second, Commissioner Morris. Thank you. So we have motion by Couch, second by Morris. Any comment or discussion? Madam Clerk, could we call the roll? Commissioner Couch? Yes. Commissioner Crump? Yes. Commissioner Fowler? Yes. Commissioner McKibben? Yes. Commissioner Morris? Yes. Commissioner Sanders? Yes. Commissioner Scribner? Yes. Commissioner Zaragoza? Yes. All yeses, motion passes. Thank you. We'll go on to B. Approval of monthly expense list 21-12. Are there questions about this expense list from the commission? Then I'll entertain a motion. Motion to approve, Commissioner Morris. Thank you. Second, McKibben. McKibben second. Any discussion? Madam Clark, would you call the roll? 
Commissioner Couch? Yes. Commissioner Crump? Yes. Commissioner Fowler? Yes. Commissioner McKibben? Yes. Commissioner Morris? Yes. Commissioner Sanders? Yes. Commissioner Scrivener? Yes. Commissioner Zaragoza? Yes. All yeses. Motion passes. Thank you. Next item is C, Executive Officer Miscellaneous Items. Mr. Knox. I got several items to bring forward tonight. Uh, first, uh, the sphere of influence, influence reviews. Every five years, LAFCO is required to review the sphere of influence for every city and special district. The process is handled by questionnaires that are sent to each agency. We then spend months begging for the questionnaires to be returned and filling out missing information. Once complete, we bring these to the commission for you to receive and file. Um, on the topic of begging, the special district seat held by Commissioner Sanders will be up in May. We also have an alternate seat open. Soon we'll, we will be sending out notices for nominations. If we have more than one candidate, we will hold an election. This is where the begging comes. For uh, there to be a complete election, we're required to receive votes for a majority of the 97 special districts in Kern County. This has traditionally been difficult and we've had to spend time calling districts, begging them to submit their votes. Um, at least one occasion, we did not get a quorum in time and had to redo the, the election all over again. So I'm encouraging folks to you know, encourage others to and make sure they get their votes in on that. Uh, the process for recruiting and hiring a new clerk administrative assistant has been initiated. To date, we have over 125 applicants, and it's been less than a week. Uh, if you know of any, if you know of someone who would make a great clerk, please send them my way. I hope to have some support soon. In April of 2020, this commission approved the formation of the Weldon Regional Water District. During the approval process, properties owned by Rosedale Real Bravo Water Storage District were removed from the formation area. This required a modification of the map and legal description that took months to complete. Once we had a map, I contacted county elections to start the process for the property owners to vote on the question of formation with a second question on the seating of the board of directors. The initial response I got from the county elections was no, they don't do special district elections. While it is true that they have, we have not had the formation of a special district at Kern Lafco for over two decades, County Laf Elections has conducted them for us in the past. Furthermore, it is common practice in other counties around the state. Lafco does not have the technical expertise nor the staffing to pull off an election. And in this case, the state water board will reimburse the county for the cost of the election. Finally, it was agreed to that the County Elections Department would hold the election. When the commission approved the formation, there was a deadline of one year to get the, all of the post approval completion uh, completed or the application is terminated. Realizing we were not going to make it in a year, I came back to the commission in April of 2021 and asked for an additional year. Between COVID and the governor's recall election, elections department has been very busy, but we had an understanding that we had a deadline of April of 2022. In November, we'd actually put together a tentative date of April 12th, uh, but last week I received a notice from county council saying that they could not complete the formation of the election in time. Uh, I was put in a position where I had to push back uh, pretty strongly, and I told them that there's a possibility that not getting election done within this time period uh, would require termination of this, of this formation and 13 years worth of work uh, that's gone into it. Uh, also of note was that the, the, the property owners have been waiting for all this time for a clean water source. And I think I got their attention. Yesterday, the Board of Supervisors approved a letter requiring to officially start the process and the clock on specific timelines that are needed to be met. The new election date is April 29th which happens to be exactly 365 days since this commission approved a one-year extension. Hopefully there are no more, no, more, no more hiccups 
and there is a smooth election uh, ahead of us. <sighs> so that's that. As I mentioned in December, I am now on the California Special District Association Legislative Committee. As the legislative year has just started, there's not a lot to share at this point. There is one bill that is sponsored by CalAFCO, you know, the one that I used to be on their legislative committee that provides new thresholds for dissolving in, uh, active districts. I will share that bill and others in the, in the upcoming months so the commission is aware of, a, of potential changes on how LAFCO is operated. Two more items. Uh, the Kern Valley Resource Conservation District. I've mentioned this in the past. They've been inactive for decades and, it, and is on the state controller's list of inactive districts. I mentioned that this district needs to be dissolved in the past, but I've been trying to find the funding required to place this area into an active district. The most logical would be the Tehachapi Resource Conservation District. There's a need for conservation services in the area but my options for finding uh, possible funding are running out. If I don't find a funding source soon to do this, I will uh, be bringing this commission, uh, Kern Valley Resource Conservation District for dissolution. Lastly, uh, at the beginning of the year, we collect the financial disclosure forms, commonly known as Form 700. For public members, we collect this form directly from you for the rest of the commissioners, we request a copy from the other agencies, the county, the city, or special district that you serve. We'll be contacting these agencies uh, soon to obtain your copy. So if you haven't turned one into your, your, um, your agency, please do that soon so we can get that, that um, requirement completed. That is the end of my report, and I hand it back to the chair. Thank you, Mr. Knox. Now we're going to go into closed session. So I need to ask uh, Mr. Rice to turn off the recording and we are adjourned to closed session. Please let question. So I That's okay. That's okay. Uh, it's, it's not a, it's not a confidence. Good. Are there any other items to come before the meeting? Then we're adjourned. Well, let's, let's announce that, let's announce that the minutes were approved. I want to get out of this very fast, you can tell. Right. Our next meeting will be February 23rd, 2022. And the minutes were approved on a motion by Commissioner McKib McKibben, seconded by Sanders and unanimously adopted. Thank you. I believe we're adjourned. adjourned. Thank you, everybody. Thank you.